So over the past five years, I've done some 2,500 plus videos, but today is the first. I've never done one actually while in a car, a moving vehicle. Now, I'm not driving. I haven't been able to drive for the past three months since my surgery, but on the way to the doctors today to get the latest bad news, I'm sure, from the doc who said going into my surgery, which was eight weeks ago on Friday, that, hey, you're going to be fine after the surgery, four to six weeks recovery. And then, of course, after the surgery, I find out, oh, no, it's going to be eight to ten weeks. And I got news for you. Friday's eight weeks and I ain't getting any better. So it'll be interesting to see what bad news I get today. But hey, I've got some free picks coming your way in a moment. And to be honest with you, I ran short of time before I left the house because getting ready to go to the doctors ain't no fun. And I didn't feel like typing here in the car, doing the video. So I figured this would be a lot easier. Although I have to be honest with you, you're gonna have to put up with the bouncing around here today because Pennsylvania roads suck, especially when you're trying to do a video, which I guess most people, 99.9% .9 of the public are not shooting videos while they're actually a passenger in the car. But it's nice my wife is acting as my chauffeur as she has been for the past couple of months, the unpaid chauffeur, so, you know, I can't really complain too much. I complain about other things. A couple of post-Super Bowl thoughts for you. You know, the day after the conference championships games, I told you that I thought one of the biggest crimes is the fact that you had the extra week between the conference championships and the Super Bowls. That generally what happens is that you're always going to find one, if not both teams, come out a little sluggish offensively. Um, to me, it's no different than when you have all the weeks off between the end of the regular college football season and the bowl games. That generally you're always going to have one team that's just going to be out of sync. And I pointed out that I thought that's what affected Tom Brady and the Patriots coming out of the regular season and going into the first playoff game with the Houston Texans. Um, and then you saw in the next game against Pittsburgh how uh, Brady was just on fire. Well, you saw what happened on Sunday, the first half. Brady and the Patriots just couldn't get anything going offensively. Second half, it was a different team, a different Brady, and we saw what happened, the end result. But it's never going to change. The NFL is never going to go back and revert to that one week off. I think it would be better for the game, but... Money makes the wheel go round. And because the NFL has to have the time to set up all the elaborate parties, all the elaborate corporate events, all the advertiser parties and sponsorships and all the things that makes the money pour into the big week leading up to the game, you're never going to have that extra week disappear. And you've got to also have the extra time to allow the teams and the fans, who really are probably lowest on the totem pole when you think about it, when it comes to the considerations, you know, you got to have the travel time factored into this as well. And it's a damn shame. Uh, in terms of the Falcons, listen, uh, they ain't getting back to the Super Bowl next year. I think they're a one-hit wonder. They are going to be next year's version of this year's Carolina Panthers. They don't have a defense. I mean, wasn't that clear again? It should have been clear all year long. Uh, listen, they are going to be the Green Bay Packers, a damn good offense without a defense. They're going to be perennial New Orleans Saints, uh, teams that are going to put lots of points on the board, maybe win seven to ten games again. But until they build a defense, they ain't going to get anywhere again. They just had one of those years this year. Um, you know, they got Vic Beasley Jr., and they got nothing else. They have to make some massive acquisitions on the defensive side because they just don't have the talent there. And the problem is you got to build up that defense quick enough to make sure that your offense is still going to be intact because this is the NFL. you got free agency. You've got salary cap issues. And you're going to have to be able to bring that defense in. Now, do the Patriots have an outstanding defense? Well, on paper, they led the NFL in fewest points allowed. But... They certainly get enough key stops when it matters most. And that's what made the difference this year. They came up with enough of them. And, of course, when you have Tom Brady on the other side of the ball, geez, that certainly makes a difference. One final Super Bowl note for you. Uh, listen, I know that I'm just beating my head against the wall trying to convince you guys otherwise. But when that game went into overtime, how many of you out there believed again in me when I tell you, when that line crosses three, four, seven, and sometimes 10, you got to be buying that half point because didn't you feel pretty damn good, whether you were on the Patriots or whether you were on the Falcons, if you bought that half point down at minus three and you were sitting there at minus two and a half in overtime? Yeah, 
Sure, it wasn't needed because the Patriots marched down the field. But if you add New England there, and if the Patriots had settled for a field goal, and they would have won by three, didn't you feel damn good that you went through that whole game and you wouldn't have walked away with a push? Oh, the sports books would have loved it if you walked away with a push. They would have loved it, sure. But they wouldn't you feel good that you at least were in the game? You had the Falcons at minus two and a half. Yeah, you didn't win one way or another. Sure, it would have cost you a couple of extra shekels, but hell, you were going to lose the damn game anyway, and you were definitely comatose after watching the Falcons blow the lead. But you at least would have been in the game. Okay, let's talk to your free picks here because, guys, I'm almost to the doctors, and i got to get off this video, and i got to feed the damn thing. So, tonight, I'm going to go with South Carolina, minus the points at home against uh, Alabama. The price has jumped up. It opened up at 6 earlier today, 7, 7.5. It's a little too rich for me. And, again, you have to pardon the roads. Pennsylvania roads suck. That's why we're bouncing around here. Um, South Carolina here, Gamecocks coming off a 77-75 win at home against Georgia on Saturday. Of course, that was a huge win for two reasons. One, they improved to 9-1 and one in the SEC. And, two, because Kentucky got upset they are now sitting atop the SEC. The Tide, meanwhile, coming off an 82-77 to home loss to Auburn as they get swept by the uh, Tigers in the season series. That game wasn't even close. They were down by 14 points with 2.24 to go in that game. Auburn, 15 three-pointers against a Tide defense that can't defend against three-pointers. They are ranked 289th in the country, allowing opponents to hit 37.4% of their three-point shots. Um, now something to consider. You know, Auburn, who hit 15 three-pointers, is ranked 181st in the country when it comes to hitting three-point shots. Al um, South Carolina is a better three-point shooting team. They're ranked 97th in the country. Um, this is a payback game for South Carolina. Last year, they started great. 15-0 start. They went to Tuscaloosa, went to Coleman Coliseum, a dreary place to watch a college basketball game. Trust me. And they got crushed 73-50. to So, uh, they're coming off a revenge win against Georgia. Last year, they went 0-3 against uh, the Bulldogs. Um, they beat uh, Georgia in both games this year. And now they get that little payback against the Tide. Um I'm going to go with South Carolina, tough, stingy defensive team, number eight in giving up points per game this year at 61.5%. And you have an Alabama team that is second to last in SEC scoring, averaging only about 70 points a game. So um, I'm willing to lay the points here. But again, it's tough with South Carolina because they need to be on top of their game defensively in order to generate points offensively. But South Carolina would be the play. Uh, I'm going to go with Georgetown plus the 14 and a half points against Villanova. Georgetown coming off a uh, disappointing performance against uh, Seton Hall at home. They lost 68 to 66 in overtime, had their three game winning streak snapped. They shot 38 percent in that game. They were one for 19 with their three pointers against the Pirates. Now, Villanova has repeatedly blown huge double digit leads this season. They play good defense. They're a very good shooting team. But turnovers just kill the Wildcats. Nearly cost them again against St. John's uh, in their most recent game. 92-79, but they had 23 turnovers in that game. Shot 43%, but they blew leads at 26 early, 24 late. Uh, 23 turnovers led to 33 points in that game for the Johnnies. Um, they're shooting 49% on the season, number 10 in the country. Uh, the defense, they only allow 63 points a game. That's number 18 in the country. But, listen, the Hoyas are a damn good team defensively, too. They lead the Big East in holding opponents to just 41.3% shooting on the year. Nova, 3-0 sweep against Georgetown last season. They've won 40 straight, 47 straight games on their on-campus uh, arena. As a matter of fact, I just passed that arena no more than about two minutes ago. Uh, they're uh, shooting. Uh, they've won 47 straight at the Pavilion. I think they win this game tonight, but this is a big margin. I just think Georgetown can stay with the number. The game to be cautious tonight about is Kentucky. Uh, the Wildcats, of course, just got hammered uh, by uh, Florida. Uh, 88-66 on Saturday. They have lost three of their last four games. On paper, they should destroy LSU tonight because LSU is an awful team. Uh, LSU has lost, what, nine straight games. But Kentucky is not playing well, guys. Uh, Kentucky out-rebounded by 25 by the Gators. Season-low seven assists. One and three their last four games. The defense has allowed 79 points in each of them. But offensively, the Wildcats have only averaged 77.3 games during this one and three stretch. Their offense, the first 19 games of the season, had averaged 93 points a game. 
Wildcats, 25-point favorite. Looks easy on paper against a bad LSU team that, hell, gave up 106 points in a home loss to Florida. Gave up 92 points in a road loss to Texas A&M. Gave up 110 points in a loss at Wake Forest. Bad team. But I want to be laying those 25 points with Kentucky tonight until the Wildcats and Coach Cal figures out what the hell's wrong. So that's a caution tonight. So, again, the free pick, South Carolina and um, uh, Georgetown. And I like South Carolina more of the two of them. That'll do it. I wish you well, guys. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.